Ladies and gents, welcome to the video. I'm Get Good Guy, and Battlefield 1 was, and still is, an emotional masterpiece. An atmospheric, impactful, and at times visceral experience. With new content for the current iteration of Battlefield soon coming to a close, marking the beauty and value of one of its predecessors feels of even more importance now. How did this game manage to do what so many didn't, couldn't, and don't, including the game that followed it directly in the series? How did Battlefield 1 make so many people feel something, really feel something? Much like film or music can make people feel something emotionally, it's becoming more and more widely accepted now that games can do the same thing. It's an art form in its own sense, and Battlefield 1 really encapsulates that premise. So not in the usually found way that a game might make you feel something, be it excitement or frustration or sometimes anger. No, this is a deeper feeling, whether it be admiration, sadness, nostalgia, shock and awe, or any number of other feelings, because this game, in that sense, was an absolute masterstroke stroke. But we're not looking at this as a direct comparison with Battlefield 5. That would seek only to devalue the statements being made. In fact, we don't need to compare it with any other game out there. We don't need comparison points. We need only look at the qualities of this game in isolation to see the value that it holds. What I want you to really focus on today while you listen is what you're actually seeing displayed. Fully take it in, be present in the moment, and truly appreciate both the minute details and the vast experience expanses being displayed, in what is now, perhaps even more obviously than before, a genuinely impressive World War I experience. This is Battlefield 1, the emotional masterpiece. Now this piece of content is constructed around the intangibles of Battlefield 1, not the specific inner workings of the gameplay, nor weapon balance, class abilities, or anything of that nature. So of course this leaves aside the issues that the game undeniably has, many of which I personally covered, discussed, and lamented when this game was the current title for the series. This is no perfect experience, not a game devoid of frustrations and problems, and yet, in many ways, that's the point. For many people, the the intangibles of this game make up, in a lot of ways, for whatever issues that may be present, at least for a certain amount of time. Or, at least, the nostalgia of playing the game now helps to push the detraction points of the design to the back of our minds. Battlefield 1 is an obviously beautiful game, a point that barely needs making, one that's been raised an innumerable number of times, ever since we got our first glimpse of the game, what is now some years ago. There are inaccuracies, of course, but for many, they're minor enough that they're impact is near insignificant. Only minor amounts of suspending disbelief are necessary for your average player who isn't some kind of history buff. And for the vast majority of those who are clued up on World War One, well it may not be as accurate as they would like. The emotional tone of the game is still undeniably brilliant. The art style makes it feel almost real, it's believable, it's squint and it might be reality kind of art design, very different to what we can find elsewhere a lot of the time. It's got that genuine feel to it. You can see it as some kind of replica of where they're trying to portray, of the world we're in, of the world war that we're experiencing in the game. It doesn't feel phony, it doesn't feel forced, and that allows the key aspects of the game to actually hit home with us while we're playing. The colours work, the perspective works, the sizes of things work, the textures work, it all combines as not just a game but an art presentation. Battlefield 1 also showed that the feeling of being within an actual world matters in a game such as this, in a game where you're presenting World War One, A conflict that engulfed the world at large should make you feel like you're actually in a world being engulfed by that conflict. The skybox displays this, the out of bounds areas display this. You can see far off into the distance, know you can't go there, and yet still feel like the battles are taking place out there. You are but one individual in a wider conflict, expanding outside of the 64 player game you might be in right now. Somehow, in some way that I can kind of explain but not fully, Battlefield 1 does this better than I've seen elsewhere, either by luck or by design.
design, they made it feel as though you are one cog in a massive machine, squaring off against another massive machine, within a world that you can recognise as your own but isn't familiar, as it's battle scarred in ways that the vast majority of us simply can't relate to. The feeling of being within that world matters. The landscapes therefore feel genuine, whether it be a narrow street, with the walls on each side being a mere few metres apart, or the wide open countryside punctuated with smoke, explosions and gunfire. There's no awkward or distracting colouring. The majority of the time the colours and tone of the game retain that realistic factor, while still at times being vivid and beautiful. Something that lends itself to no HUD mode if you choose to play without one, being absolutely stunning. Take the UI off the screen and engage in escapism, allow yourself to feel as if you're really there. And for me, there's no attempt at what comes across as false atmosphere, it all rings true in a way that you really will struggle to find elsewhere. Most of the visibility factors, aside from the perhaps too strong contrast, along with the effects and the level of detail are possible in this game, without being a detracting factor most of the time due to manual spotting or 3D spotting. Whether you like that mechanic or not, whether you want it to be in this game or other games or not, it did allow Battlefield 1 to be presented in this manner, and still have the gameplay flow and feel engaging and intuitive. Moving on from that and a focus on the visuals, of course I must briefly mention the sound. I'm going to use that word again, genuine. Explosions, gunfire, the direction of the sounds, everything. It all helps to portray the situation to an impressive degree and of course, in conjunction with that, is the music of the game, the theme tunes. They're beautiful in their own regard. Some who experience this game will hear that music and recognise it, it'll take them back to playing this game. But of course it's not just the audio and visuals that have this impact, it's the way the game is constructed. How set pieces are almost formed by the map design, how different the landscapes are, giving you a sense of how much the world was genuinely affected by this war. All presented on a grand scale, but with an artistic touch that doesn't detract from the experience, instead it enhances it. The cinematic aspects of the game, such as the zeppelin looming overhead, or it crashing down to earth and killing those below, they can be breathtaking moments, and a reasonable balance was struck with them. Cinematics, animations, extra touches balanced with the gameplay. DICE had yet to take this aspect too far in Battlefield 1, something they undeniably would do in the near future. But perhaps for the point being raised today, most importantly is the harrowing reality displayed. People die, there's no hiding it, it's displayed for you. In the opening portion of the game you have to play through before choosing what you want to do in Battlefield 1, you embody many different individuals. You're informed that you're not expected to survive and you don't. With each person inside of them looking through their eyes, you fall, you die. And each time your short life is displayed on screen. Not just saying this is what happens in this video game, but saying this is what happened in this war, this war that actually took place. Each soldier dies as you control them, and you simply move on to the next one to die with them as well, and again, and again. The cutscenes in this game don't shirk the truth. This is war. This is what became of people's lives, often with either their own ending or themselves ending the life of another. It's not glorified, it's not celebrated, it's simply presented. All of that combined is why for me, Battlefield 1 is an emotional masterpiece, and one that we know is hard to replicate. And I'm looking forward to diving back into it again soon. They push, we push. Every once in a while, we push hard enough that the light breaks through the clouds. It's in a world beyond the war glimmers, just out of reach. The war is the world, and the world is the war. Every gun sight is a human being. We are those people. We are the jaded. We are the naive. We are the honorable and the criminal. We are the bound for legend and the lost to history. We are the knights of the sky, the ghosts in the desert, and the rats in the mud. These are our 
our stories. The reveal trailer did not get us off to a good start at all and DICE completely missed the tone that they should have been going for for a World War 2 game. We all know this now, the game basically didn't deliver a World War 2 experience in the way that the vast majority of people would want it to have done. 